Today on Deep Dive, we're going to be looking at Marvel Comics The Amazing Spider-Man number 68. The Kingpin has his eye on an ancient tablet. Can Spidey stop him? The answer lies inside. Hello everyone, my name is Devin, also known as DH Artist, and welcome back to my Deep Dive series. Today we'll be continuing the adventures of our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And if you missed my deep dive coverage of his other issues, I'll link to them in the video description below. Now even though this can be viewed on your phone or computer, try casting it onto your TV so you can really see the detail and quality of the book. With each issue, you can expect their conditions to vary. Today's book is in nice condition, so there won't be anything to detract from the artwork. Also, be sure to check out the top 5 comic book covers in my collection. It was in response to a recent challenge I received, and I think you'll be surprised with my selections. If you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more content like it, check out some of my other deep dives. I've covered issues like Black Hawk number 125, Captain America Annual number 1, Hawkman number 6, and Tales to Astonish number 44, featuring the first appearance of the Wonderful Wasp. For a complete list of my videos, visit the organized playlists on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Amazing Spider-Man number 68 was published in January of 1969. Editor-in-chief was Stan Lee, cover artist was John Romita Sr. The story titled Crisis on the Campus was written by Stan Lee, penciled by John Romita Sr. and Jim Mooney, inked by Jim Mooney, and lettered by Sam Rosen. The book consists of 32 pages with a cover price of 12 cents. Today's story begins at the headquarters of Wilson Visk, also known as the Kingpin. As he learns about a newly discovered ancient clay tablet, a tablet that throughout the ages countless men have died for. After learning that the Science Foundation will display the tablet at Empire State University, he begins making a plan to steal it. But when one of his men suggests that Spider-Man might be a problem, the Kingpin becomes enraged. He then begins his daily workout, showing off his strength and the power he possesses on five of his unsuspecting goons. Throwing the overconfident men around like rat dolls, the Kingpin uses his speed and strength to easily beat them. He then fires them all for being a bunch of losers. As the Kingpin plans his heist and plots to finish off Spider-Man once and for all, let's catch back up with the web spinner as he returns back to his apartment after defeating the villainous Mysterio in the previous issue. Slipping in quietly through the window as to not alert his roommate Harry, Pete changes out of his costume, ready to get some sleep. The next morning, Pete heads to his classes at Empire State University. But before he can get inside, someone calls to him, and after some brief pleasantries, Pete meets Randy, the son of Joe Robertson, city editor of the Daily Bugle. As Pete and Randy talk, he's introduced to Randy's friend Josh. Josh tells him that the school is turning an old hall into a private dorm for visiting alumni to come and study the ancient tablet. 
so in protest, a group of students are planning a rally, because the hall should be for needy students who can benefit from their low rents. Before Pete can gather more info on the rally, Gwen Stacy surprises him, and the two head off to class. Meanwhile, at the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson is furious that they didn't get the scoop on the Spider-Man Mysterio battle, and he begins to realize that maybe he acted too harshly the last time he kicked Parker out of the building when he came in to sell pictures. A few hours later, we join Pete and Gwen as they stop by to visit Aunt May. As the three catch up, May pretends to be in better health than she really lets on, so as not to spoil Pete and Gwen's happiness. The next morning, as Pete arrives on campus, he finds a large crowd of students protesting. After speaking with Josh and Randy, Pete heads inside to look at the ancient tablet, all the while sympathizing with the protesters. Meanwhile, back outside, Josh stirs up the crowd into a frenzy. They then begin to march towards the hall to take it over, until the faculty listens to their demands. With the rally broadcast over the news, Joe and JJ watch from the Daily Bugle, and when Joe departs to find his son Randy, Another interested party watches the campus protest with more than a casual interest. Sensing his moment to strike, the kingpin summons his men to prepare for a raid, planning to use the rally as a distraction. Back on campus, as the protesters storm the hall and occupy the building, Pete heads up to the second floor window to take plenty of pictures for the bugle. Meanwhile, not far away, the kingpin and his men arrive on the scene. They then cause an explosion to serve as a diversion. So while the police handle the protesters, thinking that they're responsible, the villains make their way inside towards the tablet. Breaking down the hall door, the kingpin and his men push through the crowded corridor, brushing past Pete, unaware of his super secret. As kingpin makes his way to the tablet's exhibition chamber, Pete ducks into the janitor's closet, quickly donning his spider suit. He then swings over the crowd of protesters, following the kingpin and his men. As the kingpin and his men reach the tablet display, Pete quickly sets up his camera to capture the action. And just as the kingpin fires gas pellets to stun the security guards, Spidey leaps into action, striking hard against the goons. As Spidey and the kingpin trade punches, he makes short work of the accompanying henchmen. But when the kingpin resorts to brute force, he grabs hold of Spidey, throwing him to the ground. As the kingpin prepares to deliver the final blow on our stunned spider, Randy leaps between them, causing the kingpin to toss him aside, knocking him into a wall. With Fisk distracted, Spidey leaps into action, and with the speed of a machine gun, he unleashes a barrage of bludgeoning blows. Knocking Kingpin to the ground, Pete turns his back on him, rushing to check on Randy, never suspecting that the villain would have another trick up his sleeve. Some of the fun advertising found within this issue is a full page ad for a skin diver underwater beam light, there's a half page application for boys to sell grit, in the shop by mail section you could order an electric guitar for $12.95, and super smoke bombs 5 for a dollar. And then there's my favorite half-page ad featuring live seahorses for 90 cents and darling pet monkeys for $18.95. Reaching for his cane blaster, 
the Kingpin fires a shot at Spider-Man, narrowly missing him, but striking the wall. With the wall compromised, it starts to break apart, as Randy lay dazed below it. Breaking off the fight, Pete swings into action, quickly saving Randy from the falling wall. With our heroes stunned in the rubble, the Kingpin snatches the tablet and makes his escape. As the police round up the protesters, thinking that they're responsible for the tablet's theft, Spidey makes his way outside, just in time to see the Kingpin speed away in his car. Spider-Man then vows to track him down, since it's the only way to vindicate the protesters. Excited for the action that lay ahead? The story continues in Amazing Spider-Man number 69. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. If there's a particular issue or comic you'd like me to flip, drop it down in the comments section and I'll see if I can add it to my poll box. If you enjoy these types of videos, please show your support by subscribing to my channel. As always, please consider liking and feel free to share this video. And until next time, deep divers, thanks for watching.